evening, viewers, and thanks for joining us for another great episode of Coca-Cola Sports Scene. Glad you could join us. We have a great show lined up for you. As usual, we start off with the sporting briefs. And this week, we feature the sport of cricket. Yep, we will be talking to Rarua Dikana of Cricket PNG, who gives us a roundup of the Hebo Shield Grand Final that happened over the weekend. And our sporting athlete for this week is Sportsman yeah, of the Year, Asad Vala. Great show lined up for you. Now, as promised, we kickstart the show with the sports briefs, and we take a look at the results of the Hebo Shield Grand Final. Yes, Hebo Shield, the grand final results. Hebo Hammers are this year's champions. Four for 304, defeating BSP all out for 118. Digicel Cup round 12 ended on Sunday. Wigman 38, edging out Sapia 34. Eagles defeating Murugs 12-10. Lahanis defeating Lions 22-14. The Vipers beating New York's here on home soil 20-16. And the Tigers... Pipping Gurias 8 to 6 there. Gurias suffering yet another loss. And to the under 14 Binatangs over in Australia. Yes, they took out this year's Queensland State Championships, the Coca Cola under 14 Binatangs. They scored 10 goals, 6 behind, a total of 66 to North Queensland's 2 goals, 12 points there. And the under 14 Coca Cola Binatangs will return tomorrow. So stay tuned next week on Sports Scene for that interview where we interview the team and they come back. Well, we go for our first break for the show for this week. Coming up on the other side, we speak to Rarua Dikana, who gives us a roundup of the Hebo Shoe Grand Final over the weekend. Yep, welcome back to Coca-Cola Sports Scene. Now, as mentioned, the Hebo Shield finals were on the weekend, and we have Rara, our good friend from Cricket PNG, to give us a roundup of the tournament, the Hebo Shield tournament that was on the weekend. Yeah, um, the grand final match was played on on Saturday last weekend, and it was a it was a good good grand final. A bit one-sided, but uh, there were some outstanding performance from the players, batsmen from the Hebo Shield side. Actually, the scores were Hebo Shield better first. They made um, uh, they were four down for 304 runs, uh, which was a big total. Um, and uh, Hebo Shield, the opening batsmen, Mahuru Dai and Vani Vagi, just played the, uh, the game out from the BSP, BSP side. Um, the, the pair put on a, a partnership of uh, 258 runs, which I believe is some, some record uh, at, uh, at the Hebo Shield level. And Vani, Vani Vagi, uh, just demolish the bowlers. He scored 144, and Maruda also scored uh, scored 104. So that was a big uh, innings uh, by the by the pair, which uh, eventually uh, played the match out of the BSP Hearts uh, hand. Uh, in in the in the chase, BSP Hearts uh, managed only 118, which uh, the scoreboard pressure was too much. Uh, for them, I, I, I thought, and full credit goes to the, the bowlers for Hebo Shield as well. They, they back their batsmen up and uh, they sort of bowl tightly and bundle, bundle out um, the BSP Hearts for 118. Who was actually the defending champs? Uh, last year, the 2012 Hebo Shield champions were New Guinea, but this time around, uh, uh, New Guinea didn't fare well. They, they finished uh, at the bottom of the ladder. And uh, Hebo Shield, who uh, sorry Hebo Hamas, who were who were at the bottom of the ladder last year, uh, got up this year and won the title this year. So, uh, what do you think Hebo um, improved on that had helped them to come up this far? Um, actually, the the teams were teams were re redone uh, because this year we changed the format a bit. Uh, we we actually um, uh, selected teams uh, with uh, with the players from the uh, players of origin, like players from Hanobara. Uh, Hebo Hamas was players uh, made up by Hanobara players, uh, cricketers, and we had Pacific MMI, uh, which was made up by players from um, the Maso Lagoon area. Um, uh, BSP Hearts was made up by uh, players from the Hood Lagoon area, so. And and you can just was, was Jets was made up by players from the Mosby South area like uh, Kila Kila, Pari and Babukori Village cricketer, cricketers made up the team. And the Brambell Bulldogs was made up by the under nineteen um, players, uh, basically to prepare the under nineteen team for the World Cup. 
uh, qualifiers. They're in Australia now. Uh, they actually played uh, a game. They'll, they'll be playing against India, New Zealand, and Australia. They're actually on the 19 team. So they'll, they'll be playing some uh, good. They were play, playing some good matches against some quality sides. They actually played the first game yesterday against uh, against uh, India. They they bowl well. The boys bowl well. They bowl out uh, India for 136. But uh, the bowling power of the the first class cricketers uh, managed to uh, keep our boys out from reaching their targets. We were actually bowl out for 65. But uh, positive. Uh, we actually we we the boys showed that we can compete at uh, at the highest level. Just fix up our betting and then it will be a good tournament for the boys they have uh, they play they rest today they play against um, they play New Zealand today and rest again and play Australia the home side uh, uh, afterwards and from the, after the tournament they move on to um, uh, Sunshine Coast they'll be playing against the winner of the East Asia Pacific uh, qualifier to qualifying tournament and the winner versus PNG play in the final and then Whoever wins goes and plays, qualifies for the Under-19 World Cup, which will be held in um, uh, January. Uh, sorry, February next year. Great stuff. There, great news. They're happening for cricket now. After the Heba Ushir, I understand there is a squad that's going to be named. Yeah, actually, we've uh, we've actually named a 35-man squad uh, uh, purely throughout the performance of the Heba Ushir competition uh, for men uh, and the the team managers and coaches have nominated. Uh, players from their teams and we actually played around with the with the names a bit and then we came up with the final 35 uh, and the, the, the squad will be uh, the basis of our selection for for the rest of the year for Hebo Shield sorry Hebo uh, Baramandi's uh, squads because um, the, the, the Baramandi's uh, have a series in in August and then we come back here in 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 September, the guys continue training. In October, we have the South Australia Cricket League, uh, which is a, starts in October, and then we have in November um, our T20 World Cup qualifier, which is in Dubai, and then uh, January next year will be our 50 overs uh, World Cup qualifier again. So the boys have a lot in hand to put up a 35-man squad. Sort of uh, put uh, gives us a big base to select the players from, and that shows that. Uh, the current Baramandi players or the boys who, who represented Baramandi, Hebo Baramandis uh, in the last events are not guaranteed their spot. So, so the 35 men squad are all vying for spots to play in the in the Hebo Baramandis uh, in the rest of the, the year's events. You have to work for that spot. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, uh, it's it's a, it's quite a demanding calendar, and we expect uh, all players to. To give their best, 100%, especially in their training, and also there'll be some some trial matches uh, uh, happening. So the boys will have to um, give their best to 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 impress the selectors to make the final squads. Good stuff there. Now, what about the females? Uh, yes, we also have a, um, a busy schedule for the women's uh, this this year. Um, They've, they've just completed their, their hair bow shield competition as well, um, uh, two weeks before the men's grand final. So they've wrapped up their, their tournament. And they've, um, they, they, they've actually we've put uh, trial matches for the women's in the last uh, two weekends. And uh, this week we'll be also finalizing their, their, their squad uh, for, for the women's uh, tour. They, the women will actually be touring uh, New South Wales. Uh, and they'll be playing uh, in in a series that uh, that consists uh, the Tasmanian uh, uh, Tasmanian uh, women's team, um, the South Australia women's team, and the New South Wales women's team. So they'll be playing against some quality sides as well. So we have to make sure that the girls are up for that uh, the task in 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 September. Yeah, great, great news they're happening for cricket. And speaking about some great news. We have a couple of guys behind us, um, Rarua. What are they actually doing around here at the pitch? Uh, actually, um, since our our um, our tournament has um, ended, um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, work to be done on our mini park, especially in the irrigation uh, part. So the boys are digging up uh, 
holes for uh, irrigation pipelines to, to run through. So Amini Park, uh, not, not only Amini Park, the coals ground as well will be dug up uh, starting from this week and some of the spots will be affected, but uh, it's a short term, short term pain, but long term gain. So all, all other spots will benefit as well. So as soon as we put the irrigation in, the, the field will, will look even better, uh, hopefully in four to six months time. Become a multi-purpose venue. Yeah, um, we want to um, we want to make sure the public amenities, especially on Amini Park, uh, are up to um, international standards. And as we um, as we go into uh, international, uh, more of international tournaments and events, we need our boys to be our fields has to simulate what we get overseas, and that's what we are aiming at. That's uh, that's our focus here at Cricket Pinch. We want to make sure. Our, our, our athletes, our players are given the best uh, facilities possible to enhance their performance, hopefully, uh, when they go overseas. So that's, that's the focus we have, and I think we are on the right, right direction. We certainly are. Well, we do wish you all the best with cricket for this year, and thank you for joining us this evening on Coca-Cola Sports Scene. Thank you, Marek. All right, we'll go for a break now. When we come back, we take a look at this week's sporting profile. Um, my name is Asad Vala. I'm from Kapara. I play for the PNG National Cricket Team, PNG Apple Bar and I'm 25 years old. I started playing cricket when watching my older brother play, going with him, coming to the cricket grounds, watching and I started to get interested in the sports and started playing the sport. I played for um, my local club, Woods Cricket Club, back early 2000, when I was um, 10 years old, playing for them in the under 17. I'm going out there and scoring runs, enjoying myself, having fun with my teammates. I'm a very batsman, I'm a tired part time bowler and field as well. I Played for um, my local woods. Um, played for some local clubs back in Australia during my scholarship times. I played for United Cricket Club, um, PV Tune, and I played for MMI Marlins in the Ebo Shield this year. It's probably the biggest honor playing cricket, been getting into the National Ebo Barramandis. We it's probably one of the happiest moments playing making my debut um, going into the national team. I'm making my debut 2005, 17 year old, and making the 19 World Cup a year ago, year before that, and scoring my first century this year for the, I mean, two years ago for the Bobara Mandis in 2020. I'm still playing, still, 25 years old, a lot of years side of me, my best years, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I knew I did well during the year. I was, I knew I, I was a chance in giving it. I knew I had a chance with that award, so I wasn't surprised at that. The family was really happy, and they did everything for me coming up during my early in my career and up now still still supporting me in everything I do. Yeah. Played a, they played a big part in my um, award. I mean, they always send me to the best man to be on a scholarship and they gave me everything to be, you know, to be where I am now. Um, cricket is not a contact sport and it's good where you travel a lot, you know, people meet different people, meet different places. And, most of all, it's a very good game, enjoy playing. I've been to Bangladesh, Namibia, to South Africa, um, Ireland, Dubai, New Zealand. There's a lot of places I've been to just because of cricket, traveling, playing, meeting new people, playing in new different places. 
I would have been playing AFL at the moment. Yeah. I started playing AFL before I joined cricket, so yeah. I think contact sports was the difference, everything. Every time I went back home, my was, body was pain inside and I just started to play cricket. I'm Masad Vala of PNG Baramandis and you're watching Coca-Cola Sports Scene. to coca-cola sports scene unfortunately it's the time we wrap up another great show for the week glad you could join us hope you enjoyed the show and can join us same time next monday night here on coca-cola sports scene on your number one for sports in 2013 mtv remember the retail price for the 500 ml coca-cola is only three kina and you can also find us on facebook sports scene you can go ahead and like the page and uh, don't forget the under 14 coca-cola binatangs arrive tomorrow so congratulations to them and can't wait Stay tuned uh, for next week's show as we interview them on their arrival. So with that, it's good night from us. <laughs> <laughs>